So this last short lecture will deal with the molecular basis of diving capacity. And I think that this, this uh, short lecture is going to base, be based on a single paper that was published in 2013 in the journal Science, and it's a, 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 a paper, that I, a publication that I particularly love. This is something that's not new to you, and I'm not going to spend time on, but remember the four basic criteria to consider a given trait and evolutionary adaptation. And we talked about immediate benefit, positive selection, inheritability, and historically traceable for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. And then the big question that we dealt with when we were discussing is, okay, we understand how we can look at immediate beneficies, uh, immediate benefit, or positive selection, or even heritability. But how do we look at the historical origin of a trait, right? And remember that we came up with the potential of using the phylogenetic uh, comparative method. Mm -hmm. This paper actually has done this. This is a paper by uh, Scott Mircetta and uh, Michael Berenbring for, from the University of Liverpool, and they title Evolution of Mammalian Diving Capacity Traced by Myoglobin Net Surface Char Charge. Mm -hmm. There is some videos on this and in which uh, basically Mike basically talks about the paper. I certainly recommend it. It's a very nice paper and a, a nice, a very uh, simply, uh, simple video in which he reports what they have found. Just to remind you of what myoglobin is. Myoglobin is a, a respiratory pigment present in muscles. This is the curve for myoglobin compared with the curve for hemoglobin. So what's characteristic about myoglobin is that myoglobin has a very high affinity, high binding affinity for oxygen. It means that myoglobin will have a hard time to release the oxygen. And it will only do that at much lower partial pressures. These lower partial pressures are very, very low, but they will be reached at the tissue level. In the blood is unlikely, but at the tissue level it will happen, and then they will download oxygen. Mm -hmm. So, for anything we can think about, myoglobin is an important protein for diving animals, because this is the protein that will allow a diving animal to store oxygen in the muscles. Mm -hmm. And we have already seen that divers basically store more oxygen in the muscles. Mm -hmm. So this is what they, they, pay, they start with the paper and they look at the amount, the amount of myoglobin per wet tissue or per, per, per mass of tissue, and then they compare it with this zeta uh, myoglobin. What is this? This is what they call the higher the, or the net surface charge in the myoglobin molecule. The net surface charge in the myoglobin molecule. That means that, like any other protein, myoglobin is charged on the surface. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this charge can have important effects, as you will see. Essentially, what they demonstrate is that the higher the charge, the higher the charge, the higher the concentration of myoglobin in the tissue. Why is this relevant? for a diving animal that wants to have more myoglobin in the tissue, the one potential solution would be to actually increase this net surface charge. You increase the net surface charge and then you can have more myoglobin in the tissue. And this is interesting and actually explains a lot about the uh, net surface charge. Divers have higher myoglobin in the muscle concentration and a higher net surface charge in the myoglobin molecule. How did that work? I'm missing a bit, but I, it probably will come. So what these researchers were able to do is that now all of a sudden, uh, well, they, they have a big database. They can actually go into different animals and look at how much concentration of myoglobin that is in the muscles, and that's what you have basically here, right? You have basically pigs, bear, bears, or, or you, many, many different animals, and look at terrestrial animals, basically have a low charge and a low myoglobin concentration. Semi-aquatic animals are in the middle. Aquatic animals, true seals, look at this here, have net surface charge and have uh, or high, uh, high concentration of myoglobin. So it seems that more myoglobin, more a higher uh, surface charge. Mm -hmm. What the authors then do is that they look at this from a phylogenetic perspective. And they take a look at this constructing a phylogenetic tree for all mammals. 
and looking, and that's what you have, the color shows you if it's blue, very, the, the myoglobin net surface, surface charge is close to zero. If it's close to red, it's higher. Notice that there is a beautiful pattern that's emerging from this study. What is the pattern? That when you have diving animals, no matter in which branch of the tree, when you have diving animals, you have an increase of the net surface charge. And that happens quite a few times. It happens for muskrats in this order. It happens for beavers in this, beavers in this order. It happens for whales. It happens for seals. It happens even for platypus to some extent, if you want. Why is this relevant, considering the phylogenetic comparative method? This is relevant in the phylogenetic comparative method because you see the occurrence in different lineages in which the ancestors did not have a higher surface charge. The ancestors of this group did not have, they were in the blue. So were the, one, the ancestors of this. So were the ancestors of this. But as soon as then these animals become proper true divers, what you see is an increase in the net surface charge of the myoglobin molecule. The authors then can go into this and look and study this rather simple because how, what determines the net surface charge of the myoglobin? The primary structure of the molecule. And that you can sequence. And actually it's been sequenced for many of them. So what the authors are saying is that different amino acid substitutions in the myoglobin molecule have allowed an increase in the myoglobin packing due to the increased surface charge in the divers. So they, what they are actually associating is that a change in the surface charge of the myoglobin allows for more myoglobin being able to pack in the muscle by changing the surface charge by actually doing some amino acid substitutions. And they can look at this and trace it into the entire tree here. Mm -hmm. Notice now in one, in one uh, branch of the tree, that would be corresponding to this one, the one in Wales, right? That's basically this branch. And what they can do here now is trace at the different amino acid substitutions that have occurred. What they can go is that, or they have actually done, taken blood from all these species or taking muscle from all these species and actually sequence the myoglobin. And then they see how are they different, how are they the same. And they chart actually the different amino acid substitutions. All these are different amino acid substitutions. Two in this branch of the tree, one here, one here, three here. So they can actually trace to the ancestors here and build up a tree and then calculate the net surface charge associated with these mutations or with these changes in amino acids. So this is a beautiful story that can trace back in history what has happened Notice, based only on existing data today, I mean, from existing species today, because they know how these species are related to each other. And they know, okay, these animals in this part of the tree have this substitution. These animals in this part of the tree have this substitution. They can trace it back and see how these substitutions lead to an increased net surface charge in the hemoglobin, which presumably would indicate a higher diving capability. Notice, these are beaked whales. Beaked whales, if you remember in my previous slide, are those that can dive deepest down to several 1,000, 1,500 meters. Presumably they are the ones that have a higher diving capability than these ones here. Or that baleen whales and rorquals, in which the color here is more orange than red. You can do, or these authors have also done it for the seals, and they show exactly the same thing. So what's beautiful about this paper is the capability of actually, by looking at the primary sequence of the myoglobin, look at the changes that have occurred and explain these changes based on the change on the net surface charge of the hemoglobin, on the myoglobin, sorry, that would allow more packing of my, my, more myoglobin. So the, this is the deal. The deal is that the net surface charge of the myoglobin allows more myoglobin to be packed into the muscle. Therefore more oxygen to be stored in this. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is a beautiful story that just wraps around the concept of the phylogenetic comparative uh, analysis that we have talked earlier in the course. And to my knowledge, this is one of the most beautiful examples of that paradigm, actually. 
Now, with this information, I think that we can truly say that these modifications in the myoglobin molecule, these mutations in the myoglobin molecule that lead to a larger concentration of myoglobin in muscles are adaptations to diving. And that's it. Thank you very much.